Hello everyone. Today our lesson is about cells and organisms. Now we are uh, using the revision guide book. So uh, our topic today is about uh, we will start firstly with life processes. Life processes, what do you mean by life processes? Any organism to consider it as a living thing, uh, this organism it should do this uh, life, pro this uh, it should have these uh, characteristics, okay? These characteristics here we have these seven characteristics uh, nutrition, respiration, movement, growth, excretion, reproduction, irritability, or sensitivity. Any organism to consider it as living thing, it should do this it should have these uh, characteristics the difference between characteristics and life process it is for example if you will come here to check your understanding you will see it says complete the table of characteristics of life with the following life processes for example get, if you will have a question that it says uh, getting rid of wastes okay this it's an example of life process okay so which getting rid of waste is it it is which one of these characteristics okay so getting grit it's an example of execration okay and the rest of examples the rest of examples i will do some of them for you the rest you will try it by yourself for example let's take the second one taking in or making food so this life process what do you think it's which one of these characteristics taking in or making food it's what it is nutrition okay it's eating getting food then changing position changing position is an example of this characteristic which is movement okay try the rest of these life processes by yourself plants and life processes if we will take on a plant and we will try to ask if this plant uh, have these characteristics for example let's take the first one nutrition getting food okay uh, what do you think how plants can um, uh, get food or how plants can uh, make their food as we explained before we said plants make their own food in their leaves by photosynthesis and also movement a plant it can change its position especially for a specific kind of plants we call them climbing uh, plants okay this climbing plants it climb so it will change its position and one more thing they are sensitive to features in the environment such as light okay uh, when we talked about tropism we said tropism it's the growth of plant in response to to an external stimulus so example of uh, stimulus here it's light we uh, we see that plants it grow uh, with or toward the direction of light another life process which is waste is okay uh, releasing getting rid of the waste is which is an example of uh, excretion the same thing it's with uh, animals so both animals and plants we regard them as living things why because they have or they share these characteristics the one that we mentioned above the same thing it's here okay also plants uh, they eat they can uh, they eat they get food and they are sensitive to their environment they can move they can uh, like move and travel from one place to another they can grow they can reproduce okay so all of this it makes all of these uh, life uh, processes it makes the animals uh, as living thing microorganisms microorganisms what do you mean by a microorganism microorganism is an organism made from a body with only one cell 
okay or we can say it's an it's an organism that uh, we we should use a microscope to see it or it's a tiny uh, organism that we cannot see it by our naked eyes uh, more organisms or microorganisms they have some uh, or they have some positive points for our life or we can get benefit from it okay uh, at specific point and at another point they they affect us uh, negatively for example how we can get benefit from microorganisms microorganisms they are what they are decomposers they are decomposers what's that mean Decomposers are organisms that feed on dead bodies. So, example of uh, microorganisms, we have bacteria and fungi. Bacteria and fungi. These two microorganisms, it feed on dead bodies. When it will feed on dead bodies, it will break down the dead bodies. Okay? And then it will, uh, like, recycle the minerals that found in the dead bodies one more thing is food production food production nowadays we use uh, example yeast okay yeast which is an example of a fungi or it's a fungus so yeast we can use to make bread okay and we have bacteria we can use to make yogurt so here it's the it's like the benefit we get from microorganisms but the negative side of it the negative effect of microorganisms it's what some of the some of the microorganisms it cause diseases okay some bacteria cause uh, typhoid cholera tuberculosis okay some protesta cause malaria and sleeping sickness viruses also it causes diseases such as measles and chicken pox so microorganisms they are decomposers we uh, they have the, their impact on our life it's either positive or negative positive it's like as we explained here in decomposition and food production but negative impact it is when it causes diseases some of the some of the topics i will skip them because uh, it's not included and it's not important for the checkpoint like this one from cells to organisms in grade 7 you studied about cell and you said cell the definition of cell cell is the basic unit of life or it's the building block of life what's that mean it means all the living things they are made up of cells now the cell it consists of many parts the basic parts of an animal cell you should know that we have two types of cells plant cell and animal cell but these two cells they share some organelles or they share or they have same uh, parts they, they they share some of the parts but at the same time they uh, differ from each other by another parts firstly if you will take a look on this cell this cell it represent the animal cell why it's animal cell firstly it con it contains or it has a a as you can see this the outer layer okay this the 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 line that is around the cell this we call it a uh, cell membrane cell membrane okay the definition you should know the name of the or organelles and also uh, the function of uh, them cell membrane firstly this the outer line it's a thin sheet of material the function of it it's to what it controls the substances uh, that enter uh, the cell it controls what goes in and comes out then the second part this it looks like empty part this we call it cytoplasm 
cytoplasm it's a watery uh, jelly okay it's 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 made up of the texture of it it's like a jelly okay uh, the function of it it uh, protect the internal parts and also and also uh, the chemical it, it supply all the chemical reactions all the chemical reactions it will take place here in the cytoplasm and the main part of the cell which is a nucleus nucleus it's the control center okay the control center it's the organelle that it control all the activities that it happened inside the cell then if you will come to the plant cell plant cell as we mentioned it has some parts that it share it with the uh, animal cell but it has another parts they are specific only for plant cell or we can only find them in the plant cell for example now if you will take a look on this one usually the plant cell they have specific shape okay uh, one more thing now if we will start giving the names for the parts let's start with the first one a a the outer layer in animal cell if you will focus we had one layer okay but here in the plant cell we have two layers okay or two walls okay what are they here we what did we said what's the name of this layer or this wall we call it cell membrane here the first layer it's not cell membrane it's what we call it cell wall okay so if you have a question that it says uh, which one of this part it found only in uh, plant cell cell membrane or cell wall so what you will choose you will choose cell wall cell wall we can find it only in plant cell one more thing which is as you can see here this part this empty uh, part this we call it vacuole vacuole okay it's like a sac the function of it it contains cell sap okay so see it is what it is vacuole then if you will see this green dots this green dots also we couldn't find them here in animal plant this green dots they are what they are the chloroplasts okay they are chloroplasts the function of it it contains chlorophyll which trap or which capture uh, sunlight for the uh, process of photosynthesis now we mentioned cell wall the first one and we mentioned uh, vacuole and we mentioned the chloroplast so these three organelle or these three parts we can find them only in plant cell in addition to that there will be of course now we have b e and f okay what do you think what are this b e f f it's the nucleus e it is the cytoplasm and b it is the cell membrane so you should be familiar with the uh, differences of uh, plant cell from animal cell in addition to that we have some cells some we call them specialized cells specialized cells it means a cell that it has a specific function in our body we have many of these specialized cells so we you should be able to identify them and also you should be able to mention the function of each one for example take a look now we have one two three these three they are what they are cells but what kind of cells this we call them specialized cells why it's specialized because each one of these it has a specific function so what you need to do you need to know the name of each cell and the function of this cell let's take some examples okay muscle cell muscle cell if you will have drawing about a cell muscle cell 
we don't have it here okay muscle cell uh, the structure of it it's spindle shaped capable of movement what is the function of muscle cell it helps to uh, it, it helps for movement okay then what's this this cell we call it nerve cell nerve cell the function of it okay nerve cell the function of uh, of it it's to transfer the electrical signals then we have ciliated epithelium cells ciliated epithelium cells these are the uh, ciliated epithelium cells this they are epithelium and we call them ciliated because it has this outgrowth this cilia okay where we can find this and what is the function of it okay cells line the windpipe okay so it uh, it line the windpipe or the trachea uh, the cilia the function of this cilia it's what cilia move dust filled mucus away from the lungs then this example uh, focus on this example and this one these two the root hair cell and the nerve cell because in um, in the questions of checkpoints for many years uh, they repeated the uh, question this the same question so if you will take a look on this one this we call it root hair cell so don't say it is root cell no it is root hair cell okay the function of it it's what cells from near the top or tip uh, take up water from the soil okay now you should be able to so see tips for success it says make sure you are able to recognize and explain the functions of a range of specialized cells so when they will give you these cells you should be able to recognize them what do you mean by recognize them it means you should be able to give the name of the cell and explain the function of it and in addition to that you need to know the parts of it okay check your understanding you will do it by yourself i solved with some of them which is 3.2 3.3 i solved it all of them by myself now spotlight on the test look at the cell in figure 3 3.7 this cell okay see the question it will be in this way name the cell name one special uh, feature of this cell firstly this is one cell uh, to identify it the name of it this it's what it's sperm it's sperm cell so name the cell you will say sperm cell then uh, name one special feature of this cell the function of it it's able to move okay adapting to habitat firstly you should be able to give a definition for a habitat habitat it's what it's a place where a plant or an animal lives then each habitat it it has its own uh, features specific conditions uh, each habitat it differ from the other habitats how for example uh, let's say let's take two two examples rainforest and uh, desert okay these these are two examples of habitats these two habitats they differ from each other uh, totally they differ by the weather conditions in it for example uh, as we know in desert uh, it's hot it's dry but in uh, in uh, rainforest it is uh, it is for example mostly it is raining so and also the types of plants and animals that it live in these two uh, habitats they have some characteristics or some features it differ from the others uh, totally they differ from each other uh, totally for example the organisms or the living things that it lives in these two habitats to stay alive they need to adapt to their conditions 
in these two habitats. For example, let's take an example about a plant that it lives in um, desert. An example, we will say cactus. Cactus, this plant, it lives in uh, desert, in this habitat. So, this plant, to survive, to stay alive, it needs to adapt. So, what are some examples of adapt, uh, adaptations in it? Firstly, because there is no water, or uh, it's, it's hot and there is less water, so this plant, what will do? It adapt, it change something in its body to adapt to this environment. How? Firstly, this plant, it has the ability to store water in its body, in its cells. And another adaptation is what? It, uh, it has a, the wall of it, uh, it's thick and it's uh, waxy, it's covered with a waxy layer. So this wax layer, or this waxy layer, it will reduce water uh, losing so because the plant it uh, lose water uh, through evaporation okay so because of this layer of wax it will uh, lose less water so each habitat we can find specific kind of organisms in it and these organisms uh, they should adapt to the environment to this environment uh, to stay alive so you need to uh, you need to be familiar with some example of animals and plants where they live and uh, how they are adapt to this to the environment that they live in it. Food, energy, and populations. Food, the energy food contains and populations of living things are all linked together through feeding. Firstly, population. If we want to give a population a definition, we will say population is what? It's many communities together, okay? Or many living organisms from different species living together in a habitat. Now, these living things to survive, they need what? They need energy. This energy they get it from food. Of course, you heard about the uh, food chain. Food chain. What's food chain? It's a chain that it's made up of, uh, that depends on food, okay? For example, when we say this animal, it feeds on this plant, and this animal, it feeds on that uh, animal, and so on. Here, what we are doing, we are uh, describing or we are giving an example of food chain. So what's food chain? Food chain, it shows how the food, it pass from one organism to another. Or you can say what food chain, it shows how the energy it transfer from one organism to another. So food chain, it shows how energy it transfer from one uh, from one organism to another one. If we will take uh, this food chain as an example, all food chains, they start with producer, okay? They start from producer, consumers, and decomposers. A complete food chain, it is producer, consumer, and decomposer. Example for producer, we have Plants. All the plants are example of a producers. Then what we will have? We will have consumers. Grasshopper is consumer. Frog also it's consumer. So in consumers we will have different examples of consumers. We will have levels. Okay. For example, the first one we call it primary consumer. The consumer that it feed on plant, this we call it primary consumer. Then, frog also it's consumer. So, but this frog, it will not feed on the plant. It will feed on what? It will feed on grasshopper. So, frog here, we will call it what? Secondary, secondary consumer. Okay? Then, consumers, all of them, we can divide them into 
three types. The first type we call it herbivore, the second one we call it carnivore, and the third one we call it omnivore. No, now what uh, what is the difference between them? See, if you'll come here to the tips of success, make sure you are aware of the meanings of these of three terms producer herbivore carnivore consumer and omnivore now what do you mean by producer it's any organism that can make it fo make food for itself or it can make its own food by themselves by itself then herbivore herbivore it's an example of consumer here before it's an organism that it feed only on plant okay then you have carnivore carnivore it's an organism that it feed only on uh, animal okay that it eat only meat then you have omnivore omnivore it's the organism that it feed on plant and animal at the same time. Example, us. Us as a human, we, uh, we eat both plant and animals. The food web and energy flow. Maybe uh, you will have uh, a question. A question that it will say, in each food chain, you will see the arrows. Okay, what are these arrows? These arrows, it shows what? So the answer here will be the arrows it shows the energy transfer or it shows the path in which the energy transfer then another term we call it food web this is food chain okay or here we can take another example grass mouse how this is food chain okay this is another food chain but as you can see here what is happening here we have many food chains together these food chains they are interconnecting with each other so when we will when we will have a member of one food chain interact or interconnect with the another uh, another food chain so this we will call it food web okay let's take this example here as you can see grass our food chain it was grass mouse hawk but here what it's happening rabbit that it belonged to another food chain what it's happening also now it interconnect with this food chain so at the end if you will focus on the arrows here what happened they are forming like a web okay that's why they call it food web then in each food chain in each uh, food chain or food web we said we will have three trophic levels producer consumer and decomposer now we talked about the role of uh, producers we said producers they are the main source of energy for other uh, organisms then we talked about the consumers and we say consumers we have three types of consumers uh, herbivores carnivores and omnivores now again we will talk about decomposers the role of decomposers or the importance of decomposers decomposers we say are organisms that it feed on dead bodies so, because it uh, feeds on dead bodies, so the function of it, it's what? It's firstly, uh, it clean the environment. Secondly, it recycle the minerals in the uh, nature. Then, factors affecting the population size. The population size, each, popula each, uh, each population, uh, there will be some factors that it will affect the size of it. Okay? Uh, these factors it's either will make the size of population bigger or smaller now let's take some examples of these factors firstly the main factor that it will affect the size uh, the size of population is food 
food supply of course when there will be enough amount of food for the organisms so here the population of these uh, organisms it will increase okay when there and in opposite if there will be less amount of food of course the size of population here it will decrease one more thing which it's diseases diseases if a if there will be a disease this it will affect on the size of population what will happen more diseases it means uh, small smaller populations and another uh, factor which is the rate of birth rate okay the number of individuals that are added to the population each year and the death rate okay so the proportion between birth rate uh, and the death rate of course if there will be more birth uh, than death so the size it will increase if it's opposite the size it will decrease okay and here as we said food and another one which is predators predators also predators it will affect on the size of population more pre more predators it means uh, we as you know we have predators and prey so more predators what will happen the size of prey it will decrease check your understanding this also it will be your task energy sources energy sources there are two main types of energy sources or all the sources, energy sources in the life, we con we divide them into two main types. These two sources are renewable and non-renewable. Here you should be able to give a definition for each one of them. What do you mean by renewable energy source? Renewable energy source, it's a source of the energy that it will never finish or it will never uh, end up it's like as much as we will use it it will not finish for example uh, sunlight sunlight as much as we are using it the light or this energy it will not end up non-renewable it's opposite non-renewable energy source it's the source of energy that we can use it once now we have some uh, examples for renewable and also for non-renewable the main source of non-renewable energy it's fossil fuels fossil fuels what do you mean by fossil fuel it's the fuel from the uh, remains of dead but dead uh, organisms example for fossil fuel we have coal oil and natural gas these are the three main examples of fossil fuel okay then uh, we have renewable we have here nuclear fuel nuclear fuel also it's an example of uh, non-renewable source why uh, this kind of energy we can get it from the energy of atoms okay but also it's non-renewable energy why because when you will get energy out from the nucleus of the atom you can use it one time then renewable sources renewable sources okay as we said sources of energy that we can use it more than one time example fuel wood or you can just say wood okay here don't mix between wood and uh, coal okay there is a, dif a big difference between wood and coal coal it's an example of fossil fuel which it's non-renewable source but here the uh, wood it's example of renewable energy another example solar energy wave energy hydroelectric power stations which it's a stations that uh, generate electricity by using the force of water and also we have wind energy okay as you of course you saw windmill windmill when how it spin uh, the blades when this blades it will spin by the help of the wind when this uh, blades it will spin then it uh, it's connected to a turbine and this turbine will uh, generate electricity 
check your understanding also it will be your task that was everything for this lesson i hope you you will get benefit from it uh, again please when you will finish watching this video write your name and if you still have any questions any concerns or if you have any suggestions please don't hesitate to text me or to write uh, your co uh, to write it in the uh, comments thank you and have a good day